Hi, my name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. So, I'm going to talk in this uh, video about tangent lines, and what is a tangent line and what is not, and how the New Calculus actually handles tangent lines at inflection points, because there aren't any, and how the old calculus or the flawed calculus doesn't actually do this correctly and i'll prove to you that the uh, mainstream calculus is actually flawed so let's begin now you'll see here that for this particular function here <clears throat> there's a certain tangent space okay in the new calculus is a tangent space this means that if you move uh, let's just do this for a second if you move this further, oops, let's do that, right. So if you move this green dot further, the tangent space is about there, okay? So if you move out of there, then there's no longer an MN pair so that you can have lines which are parallel to the tangent line, okay? So there's a certain tangent space and it only goes up to there for that particular point. But of course, if you move it along, then the tangent space actually gets to be a little different. And also on this side here, it will be different, okay? So now, that little pink point that you see over there, this, this pink point here is actually called a point of inflection. And that's where the concavity changes. There is no tangent line at points of inflection in the new calculus and that's how it should be the flawed calculus gives you a tangent well assumes there's a tangent line there and produces a derivative but that's incorrect because uh, by definition a tangent line is a finite line to a non-linear curve which extends to both sides of a point and crosses it nowhere okay so as you can see a tangent line is a finite line extends to both sides of the point and crosses it nowhere so there are infinitely many uh, parallel secant lines but if you have to try and put that there on the on the point of inflection you won't get any uh, parallel secant lines and that's how it should be okay the reason for this is that in the new calculus, the converse of the mean value theorem must also be true. Now, somebody on my YouTube channel commented that it's reasonable to have a gradient if there's a tangent line. So let's assume for one second that there is a tangent line at the point of inflection, okay? And so it's reasonable to have a gradient. So you're telling me that in your calculus there's a gradient here at this pink line but what about what about here what about right here on this function here this here is the curve of x let's see if we can put a label there um, all right the label's not there all right this here is the curve of x minus one to the power of a third plus one and as you can see According to the bogus calculus, this red line here is a tangent line, but it doesn't have a gradient. Okay, so there's inconsistencies in the bogus calculus. Um, tangent lines can sometimes have uh, derivatives, or there can be a derivative at a, at, a, at a point of inflection, and at other points of inflection, there is no derivative. So here, at this point of inflection, according to the bogus calculus, where I'm showing you, there is no derivative but over here in the bogus calculus there is a derivative and i often get asked this question by morons oh bet mr gabriel there is no derivative in the new calculus when you've got x cubed and you're at the origin that is correct morons there is no tangent line there remember a tangent line cannot cross the curve as i said the definition says the original definition says it must extend to both sides, okay? And it must meet in one point and cross nowhere. Now, let me tell you that if Newton and Leibniz thought the way you morons and the morons of the last, whatever, 200, 300 years thought, you wouldn't even have methods such as the root approximation method. 
okay? It, there'd be no way to approximate roots because if Newton thought about the derivative as a limit, <laughs> which is how it was redefined in the bogus calculus, you'd never be able to find uh, the, uh, the root using his approximation method. But that's just one example. There are so many others. Um, what I'm trying to tell you now is, what I am actually telling you is that you cannot have a derivative at a point of inflection. A half tangent <laughs> is not a tangent, okay? It has to be defined at the point of inflection. So um, two half tangents don't make a whole tangent. So now I hope I never get asked that stupid question again because, you know, the new calculus handles it correctly. Your bogus calculus doesn't handle it correctly. And there shouldn't be a derivative at a point of inflection. This is a point of inflection. If the tangent, if the tangent line is drawn uh, closer and closer, they'll, once it gets to this particular point, there'll be no tangent line. So just at that point there, there is no tangent line, but every other point there is. Now, I'll tell you a little secret, uh, which most academics don't know. Unless a curve is both continuous and smooth, the methods of calculus are null and void. For example, let's say you had a zigzag function like this. What on earth would would it mean taking the limit from one side to the other side? It would mean absolutely garbage. The curve has to be smooth and continuous. So it is, it is the tangent line which makes a curve smooth. So in other words, if in a particular interval, if it, in this particular interval, you have more than one tangent line at a particular point, or it's let's say it's possible to have more than one tangent line at a particular point, then the curve is not smooth. Yes? So those two requirements must be in place even before you can start thinking about the methods of calculus, continuity and smoothness. A curve such as this is continuous if there are no disjoint paths. Okay, so if all the paths are continuous or joint, if all the paths are joint, there is continuity. And if there is exactly one tangent line at every point in a given interval, then we say the function is smooth over that interval. So naturally, the absolute value function, as you've learned, doesn't have a uh, the derivative of x is equal to at x is equal to zero because it's not smooth there and derivatives uh, need tangent lines one particular tangent line not more than one so i hope you've understood this uh this hula blue around the tangent line and realize that there is no tangent line for the cubic at x is equal to zero. And the new calculus handles it correctly. It's your bogus calculus which doesn't handle it cor correctly. Nothing is lost by not having derivatives at point of inflections, at points of inflection. Okay, so this is the new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.